And now Chef David is here in the kitchen with me, and we're going to cook with one of my favorite ingredients in the world, black beans. Nice. So nice. what are we going to make? Uh, we're going to make a tamale pie, and we're also going to make a black bean salad. Uh, so assuming we're starting with beans that have already been cooked and uh, can work, but if we can get made to order, that's great as well. All right. Uh, we're going to start with some savory elements, onions and bell peppers, a dash of oil. Get the onions in there first. All right, and you just want to get these softened up a little bit? Yeah, we're going to soften them. We can add in our pork. All right, and so far the process feels a lot like making chili. It's exactly what we're doing, which means that you can do any variation that you would normally do for chili, including vegetarian options mm -hmm. or add in vegetables. Corn is great in this. Our black beans. And when and you cooked the black beans, did you put in uh, some vegetables or, or onions or anything like that into the beans? When I cooked the beans, I had in the pot which I added about halfway through the cooking mm -hmm. process, like half an onion, uh, or an onion half, I should say, okay. a spicy pepper. It was the opportunity I've been uh, looking forward to actually using a ghost pepper for once, uh, which is usually too spicy, but for the purpose of a big pot, worked out well. All right, good. All right. I took an orange, cut it in half, and squeezed out the juice and threw the whole thing in there, and then added like two heads of garlic, uh, just cut in half. All right, and then you just pulled those big chunks out. Yeah, they're All easy right. to get out, and uh, they add a lot of flavor over the next half hour of cooking. And then I salt the beans right at the end. Okay. All right. So we are using the liquid from the beans to add a little bit of stewiness. And some beer? Yeah, just a couple <laughs> ounces. A little goes a long way. It'll add some acidity and a little depth of flavor. All right. Let that reduce for a bit. Add some tomato juice. And you can add some chicken stock or vegetable stock or water if you need to. This is the liquid I use to braise my pork in. So ultimately, that's going to add a ton of flavor. Right. Yeah. And because I have that in there, I won't add any more spiciness. But it would be a great time to add some serrano pepper. We're going to add some dried oregano. This is where your creativity shines, Human. right? You get to do what you want spice-wise. That's right. Oh, this Little is garlic. so good. And paprika. Then we're just gonna let that simmer away. All right, so at least 30 minutes, but you could leave it you can Leave let that longer, go for right? two hours. All right. But it is going to cook further in the pie. And so if you feel like it needs a little more time, it'll still get it. All right. Let's let that simmer. And let's make the crust. What are you making that out of? We're going to take uh, masa harina, which is the basis of tortillas and tamales. It's a cornmeal that's been treated with lime. OK to break down some of those cells. And it's very fine, finer than what we think of when we think of cornmeal. So it it's is. a flour. And if you don't have this about and you don't want to go searching for it, it is in most grocery stores, you can just do a cornbread recipe oh, okay. that you might have and uh, it'll work out the same. You use baking powder. I had two cups of masa, taking a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. Teaspoon and a half of salt. Lard, and again, you could you could use another kind of shortening. You can use this butter, is, is or you can use vegetable though, shortening. Right? So I have four ounces here. I have a little over four ounces. I'm going to leave some for oiling my pan. OK. That shortening should be cold, cold, cold. And 
and that's broken up real well. Then we're going to add our water. Now that the masa is ready, we have an oiled pan. All right. We're going to put the masa, or two thirds of it, at the bottom of the pan. And we'll spread that well and get it up the sides of the pan. All right, so we're ready to put the, the filling in. Right? That's right. It's, uh, it's not a dry uh, final product. There's a lot of liquid still in here, and that's going to season out all the masa. And we're going to bake it for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. So you want it to keep moist. It smells so good. So then we're going to just haphazardly throw the rest of this around. And that should do it. All right, and then into the oven for how long? We're going to be at 350 for about an hour, and we're going to turn it halfway through that process. We'll check the color after an hour, and if it needs a little bit more color, because we want it to be kind of lightly brown, we can turn it up to 400 and do it for the rest. Right. But you're looking for the center to be firm and uh, bouncing back to the touch and feeling like it's no longer pasty, but more bread-like, like a cornbread. Okay. All right, so it's baked. We let it rest for 30 minutes. It needs that right. rest period. Well, you want all your cakey stuff to kind of set up. All right. Otherwise, it would probably crumble apart. Still be delicious, but maybe be a little messier. All right. And let's cut a piece out. And you want, then you want to do a little garnish, put on some toppings? Is that? You can put on this anything that you would normally put on your favorite Mexican style dishes. So. Right now I have sour cream and a little minced onion and cilantro and some fresh lime. But you could do guacamole or salsa. Uh, if you want a little bit more heat, you can do your favorite hot sauce. Anything right. works. Well, here, dress it up however you want. It also gives you a chance to hide the fissures that you might not <laughs> like. Yeah, you'll never know there's a crack there. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a sprig of cilantro. Sprig. And I always like a little lime. A little freshness. Oh, wonderful. And that's it. All right, Chef David, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we've made a hearty main dish. Now we're going to make a salad, right? We are. Uh, it's a real simple preparation once you get all the elements together. Unlike when we did the, the bake, we're gonna rinse off the black beans. You're tossing it with a lot of ingredients that you wanna allow their color to shine. And if you have all the cooking liquid, it's gonna cover everything and the colors won't look so great. It'll be uh, muddy, all right. It'll be muddy. <laughs> so we have uh, some roasted gold bell peppers. Some kabocha squash from Friendly Farm in Iowa City. And that's roasted. That's roasted. I tossed them with a little oil, salt, and pepper, and did them at a high temperature in the oven on a sheet pan. Nice. Uh, sauteed some corn, and I have some raw onion. Red onion. Raw red onion. Okay. Now, I'm going to give it a good covering of olive oil, good extra virgin olive oil. Lime. It's hard to overdo with that. Oh, it smells so good. Yeah, I don't think you can have too much of that lime in no. there. No. It's a rich dish, I mean, with all the beans, mm -hmm. and so the limes are going to balance that a bit. I have some chopped up cilantro. Is this something that you would prefer to let sit for a couple of hours to let all the flavors mix together, or would you serve it fresh? I would serve it fresh. 
but it would probably be good on the third day as well. Sure. Uh, spinach is fresh from Herb Garden in Iowa City. I'm gonna put that at the base. We have some uh, toasted and salted pumpkin seeds. And some crumbled aged gouda. Well, let's try it. We're all set, right? Great. All right. Again. That is wonderful. Great. Chef David, thank you so much. Thank you.